Hello and welcome to At the Table with Jennifer McQueen. I am here with the one and only Wendy Eklund of Legislation Take Action, which you can find on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, you know, we may have become slightly familiar faces to some of you from our uh, recent fight against AB 1316. And now we are here again full force to rally the troops against the governor's proposed independent study changes in California's Department of Finance trailer bill language. Yeah. So I want to start with, you know, I just really feel the need to take a moment to start off by making something very clear and make sure that everybody understands the basics of this. Um, I am adamant that if everyone really, really understood who is impacted by this and how, there would be a fire lit across California. Right. Uh, so let me just spell this out for you. If you sign a master agreement, you are considered an independent study learner. So yes, all of you non-classroom based public charter school learners are mm -hmm. also considered independent study in addition to what you would also consider to be the more quote unquote traditional independent study student from brick and mortar public schools. Um, so now Wendy, correct me if I'm wrong, but, and, and I very well could be because we know I'm not a politician and I'm certainly not an expert. Well, neither am I, but <laughs> we're learning together. That's true. I learn so much from you ev literally every time we talk. Um, you know, but from what I can read from the proposed independent study requirements, it seems like this will put some pretty serious restrictions on who will qualify for independent study as well as what the requirements will be. Um, really almost to the point where it seems to me as though the purpose is like to completely wipe out independent study. Um, I'm reading things such as learners who are on independent study because of serious and sometimes terminal illnesses that drastically affect their day-to-day -day function will have virtually zero day-to-day -day flexibility anymore. Um, and that's even if you still qualify uh, to do independent study, which it seems to me will now be very difficult, if not impossible for most learners with exceptional needs, right. non-classroom based learners, um, you know, and many, many more. So can you maybe elaborate for us on what these new independent study requirements are in the trailer bill language? So what the requirements are is that it's making it less flexible than it has been since 1976 when the original independent study laws came to California. And that is that within the master agreement, it has to include a plan for both daily live interaction and weekly synchronous instruction with your credentialed teacher. So that's gonna be a huge impact, especially for those of us that are homeschooling through a public independent study program at a charter school. It also requires um, specific documentation of daily educational engagement for all students, but doesn't specify what those exact requirements are. Our schools currently do track what we're doing for daily engagement, but is this going to increase what that requirement is? We don't know. So we have not seen what the actual language is going to look like. We've seen what the governor is proposing. It also requires that an independent study board, so either the board that oversees the charter school program or the county office of ed program or the um, school district program has to have a board policy to include a plan to tra transition pupils out of independent study if requested. Well, a lot of these schools don't have a non-independent study option. They're only independent study schools. So what is gonna be acceptable with that plan? Are they going to have to start a classroom option? Um, we don't know. So we need to see what that's gonna say. So those are just kind of some of the really concerning things. It's also put in a lot of requirements on the CDE to create a digital form for the education agencies to use to report daily participation and weekly engagement between the student and the school or that credential teacher. So what is that requirement gonna look like? That's not something we currently have within our charter schools. And so as I understand it, you know, you definitely are someone that tends to be 
very in the know and sort of the first one to get a lot of information on California education legislation. Um, so could you maybe clue us in on, you know, what have you been hearing about these proposed changes and specifically from the CDE? Well, so what I'm hearing from the offices as I call around is that, you know, there's still negotiations. That language isn't set in stone. We don't know what the language is going to be. And it was supposed to be approved by today, as you remember. But what I'm hearing is that they're just passing through what they call a nutshell of a bill. And then they'll put in all of these trailer bills that are actually going to put in the policy and procedures after the fact. And we're looking at possibly having upwards of 90 of these budget trailer bills going through this summer. They won't all apply to, you know, independent study and education, but definitely things we need to keep an eye out for. And then last week, I was doing some just research kind of on the side, trying to figure out exactly how many schools are going to be impacted, because it's not actually that easy to figure out how many independent study schools we have here in California. If you look at the CDE's website, it says, um, to find an independent study program near you, call your county office of ed or call your district. A lot of county offices of ed don't have them. And I even talked to a number of county offices of education that don't have independent study programs. And they couldn't even tell me if they had any within their districts that are within their county. So they said you'd have to call each county, each district office separately. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to email the CDE and find out, you know, exactly what kind of list they do have. Well, to my surprise, I received an automatic reply saying that they were not in the office. But the scary thing about this auto reply is that they stated at the end of it that they're going to be holding these webinars to review the new independent study requirements and answer people's questions. So why is the CDE preparing webinars for laws that have not been passed. We don't even have bill numbers for these laws, but yet the CDE has been clued in to the fact that these changes are coming. So are these changes already agreed upon? Are we as citizens of this state being locked out of being able to see what those laws gonna say? Like what is actually going on? So that's what we want to know now, right? Well, absolutely. You know, and that's and that's the biggest thing is what is really happening? What kinds of deals are being made right. and what things are happening that the public is just not aware of yet? Right. Um, you know, and I, I definitely understand how it may feel and, and very well does feel a bit overwhelming and frustrating mm -hmm. um, to hear that the CDE seems to be preparing already um, for these proposed changes. And Honestly, most of us are still recovering from our opposition to AB 1316 still, you know, right. but I can't say enough and I can't stress enough how crucial it is that everyone watching right now understands how much bigger this is than AB 1316 and how important it is to mobilize every single person in every single district. You know, you, and you cannot assume that others are aware or that they know what's going on. It was absolutely astounding to me when we were launching our opposition to AB 1316, how many charters were completely unaware that AB 1316 was even a thing. And, and really it was extremely surprising to me how many families um, were asking, what's AB 1316 when we were announcing that it was killed? Yeah. When you know, it was already over with, yeah. Exactly, and and you know, I felt like we did such a good job of getting the word out and people were, you know, posting and spreading the word and sharing, um, but it's still, there were so many corners of California that we did not reach. So it is crucial that everybody helps spread the word. So can you just sort of talk to us about what your thoughts are on that and why is it so important this time for everyone to rally and get involved? So first I wanna also say, don't assume that everyone else is taking action. Everyone needs to take a step and do something to help us oppose this, or at least get answers, make those phone calls. So we have two posts up on our website. One is kind of the introduction to when we heard about this language. And there are, I believe, six steps on that post. And we literally walk you through where's the link to find the information you need for your district, the step that you need to take in order to do it. We have sample letters that you can copy and paste. Feel free to edit those, feel free to use them as 
exactly as they are, totally up to you. And then the second post is strictly about this um, information from the California Department of Ed or the CDE. We want to ask our legislators if they know that this is happening with the CDE, find out what they know and share the email that I got from the CDE and ask them to do a little research themselves and let them know that we're in opposition of any language that is making changes to our longtime independent study law because the problems that they experienced in the school districts with distance learning is a completely different program that is ending the end of this month and is not available for school districts to offer anymore. So everyone that wants to offer an independent study program has to do it through that 1976 law that has been serving students well for years and years and years. So we don't want any changes, especially changes to deal with a temporary problem brought on by COVID. Yeah, you know, you bring up a really good point that this distance learning that's been going on is something completely different yeah. than, you know, the, yeah, than what independent study that's been going on for, you know, Thank our non-classroom based learners. Uh, that's a really good point. I'm so glad that you brought that up. Yeah. Um, okay. So the CDE is totally aware of that. It states it in that letter that I, in the letters on the blog post, so you can read it for yourself, but it talks about the distance learning, that it sunsets, meaning that it ends, it's not available anymore on June 30th, and that anyone that wants, any district or county office that wants to continue with an independent study type program has to roll into the independent study law. And then it talks about how they're going to hold those informational webinars to talk about those changes. So, yes. Yes. So I'm glad we have you to help, you know, make sure that we are not missing, you know, right. all these things that are trying to sort of pass through without any eyes, you know, seeing yeah. it. Um, okay. So there's obviously the post that you can reference, get your steps, know what to do, you know, but you know, before we close out, I, we, we really need to sort of break down a little bit our windy marching orders for our various groupings of you know people who are watching you know so let's start out first with the people who are new to this which is hopefully a big crowd because hopefully we're reaching a lot of new people this time around right. um you know so we really need to spread this word to every single california corner so if you are someone that is new and just hearing about what's going on and you're sort of thinking like i don't think i can handle much i you know this makes me very nervous i'm very uncomfortable about this whole thing but i mean i definitely want to do something so for people who are sort of in that boat what is that one singular most important thing that absolutely everyone should make sure they do no matter what and i know that there's quite a few things we should be doing <laughs> if you were to pick that one what would that one be i think if it was one step it would be to call your own assembly member and your own senator and let them know that you're aware of this language and that you're opposed to any changes to independent study law and then if you want more information after that what's the next step <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So after you've done that and you're like, hey, that was pretty easy. I got my feet wet. I'm feeling super, super comfortable. I think I can handle one more thing. So what should we do after that? I would definitely focus on the post that we're talking about with that CDE letter. And I would call back to your assembly member and senator's office and ask to get the contact email for their education staffer. And then you're gonna email that letter from the CDE to the education staffer, along with the information in my post about asking about that email. And um, you can literally copy and paste it. And so all you need to do is call and ask for that person's email address and then forward along a message to them. Okay, that sounds great. All right, now. We, of course, have also a huge crowd of people who are feeling already that big fire of fight. They're ready to dive in and they're like, okay, I am here and I am ready to do all the things. So Wendy has put up a blog and it is actually going to be, the link to that will be attached to this video and it's going to tell you all the necessary things that you can do with us right now. Right. Um, things, everything that you can take action to do immediately. So for those people and for everybody who's just starting off and will eventually be ready to hop in and do all the things, give us a rundown of what we can expect from this blog and what are the steps that we can accept, expect to see. So the steps are one, to start with your local legislator. 
then next would be to move past that a little bit and go ahead and contact if you have your nerve up contact everyone that's on the budget committees and find out what's going on there and oppose this language there and then also the next step would be to contact um assembly member rendon who is the speaker um on the assembly side and then um senator atkins who is in charge on the senate side and let their offices know that you're opposed to this and all that information that we have so it's all laid out in totally clear steps for you to follow in two different blog posts that we'll link to okay that sounds great and thank you for all that step by step because i know for me it makes it so much easier when i just feel like almost like my hand is being held a little bit and i know i'm not messing anything up and i'm doing everything correctly so i know i really appreciate all the all the posts and all the blogs and all the step-by-step -step instructions well i try to make it as easy as possible but remember it's not always an easy process but i do try to um lay it out literally step by step for everybody Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's great. And we really appreciate all the work and the time that you put into that. Um, for sure. <laughs> um, so really, no matter what you're comfortable doing, or you know, what level you're at right now, if you need help, if you have questions, um, really, if you just need a pep talk, and then of course, yeah. you make sure you are staying very, very up to date on all the latest legislation news. Um, you can always contact and follow um, Legislation Take Action on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also visit um, the webpage www.homeschoolconcierge.com backslash legislation. Uh, you'll find all the information there and ways to contact Wendy. And then of course, if you need to, Wendy is always available for us. You can call her, you can text her personally. We put her number up on the screen right here. So feel free to reach out. She is obviously very approachable and very willing to talk to us and help. <laughs> yes, I am happy to give you a pep talk or talk you through anything that you are not feeling comfortable with. That's right. Uh, Wendy, I have to really, really thank you for being such a wonderful guest today. I, I really always love chatting with you. I always love chatting with you on and off screen. Yes, um, me too. So thank, yeah, so thank you so much for coming and for giving us all the info. Um, we always appreciate it. Um, also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, for future videos on this and other things, um, we have a homeschool curriculum review coming up uh, where I interview experienced homeschool parents on their favorite curriculums. And then after that, we have homeschooling on a budget um, where experts such as Wendy will be sharing with us how they have successfully homeschooled without breaking the bank. Right. Uh, so thank you again for watching and we will see you soon. Bye everybody.